sleepapnea.org presents Portraits, Living with Sleep Apnea, a conversation with Matt Gentry. Matt, as far as sleep health, what was your rock bottom moment? The rock bottom for me was when I lost everything. I had lost my marriage and um, I had got in another relationship and everything was great, but I lost her also and I felt like I was dying. It was, um, I kept waking up through the night because I thought of it was always just the back pain, but it was because I couldn't, I wasn't able to sleep for years. And it was the worst, I can't even describe it. Um, there's the show Stranger Things um, on Netflix. There's the Upside Down, and that's how I think of it in my mind. It's very dark dark, bad place. And um, I always had thoughts of suicide, for sure. And nobody understood. It's nice to be here to know that you're not alone, that I'm not alone. It's very scary stuff. And if if I'm going through this, I know there's, I think everybody's asleep now, (laughs) living living in the nightmare, unless you're wearing the mask, you know, because you don't know. You don't know. I was, I was very sick. What made you decide to seek treatment? I had already had been diagnosed and had CPAP therapy, but I wasn't compliant. My ex-wife, she's the one that told me, hey, you need to get a sleep study. And um, I, I got one. I wasn't using the, the CPAP machine. I lost weight. I had weight loss surgery. I was forced into having weight loss surgery, and I just returned my machine because I thought it was just obesity. And that was a very big mistake. And so I kept thinking that I would get better and get better, and I wasn't getting better. It was getting worse. I continued to lose everything. And so I finally got a follow-up sleep study. My doctor, the pulmonologist, Dr. Noctway, he, he had said, you still have severe obstructive, and now, because of the opioids, you have severe central. And I thought I was fine, even though I knew I wasn't. Um, yeah, I had no clue about the, the whole central sleep apnea at all. I didn't know anything about that. And so he told me how severe it was. And then I Googled it, of course, when I got home. So that I knew I had to wear the mask then at that point, once it was so bad. Did the CPAP therapy work for you immediately? When I first began being compliant and wearing the CPAP mask, I knew right away, I could tell. There was a transition. It, it's, it takes time to adjust, but I knew that I was feeling better. I knew I was on the right track. And the more that I read, the more I became obsessed with it. And I mean, I preach it all the time. That I, I can't stop talking about it. All I do is talk <laughs> about sleep apnea. Some people find God, I found CPAP life. And it's amazing, like I would not be here. I wouldn't have been able to get up on stage. The old me, yeah, no, I, I, I think I was, I know I was sick my whole life. I've never been this alert. It's amazing. It's like I'm on a natural drug of, <laughs> I'm awake for the first time ever. And it's amazing, so. I want other people to feel like this, and primarily my son. I am, it's hereditary, and he doesn't want to have a sleep study, and that's unfortunate. So, But I, I'm all about preaching awareness. That's why I'm here. What did you do to get more information about sleep apnea? Early on when I was Googling, researching, I found American Sleep Apnea Association read the website, was going through stuff, and and that was very helpful. Everything was starting to make sense. And I kept reading and reading, and there was a part where it said, to spread the word, you might be able to save somebody's life. And that was on the website at sleepapnea.org. And that really hit me, because I knew how bad my life was, and the mask, that there's a stigma with this mask, and, and I, I just, I want to break the stigma. And so 
yeah, luckily there's there's the internet. It's been great to be able to connect with other people. Matt, what are some benefits to attending the Awake Together Summit? This conference is fantastic. I knew that I was going to be, I was, I've, been, I've been very excited. I've been very excited to be invited, to come, share my story. This is what I want to do. This is my passion. And I was just, somebody just came up to me and, and told me what a great job that I did. And that was great. That felt really good. And, and that's where I was just, I was talking to everybody. And um, that's the only way that people are gonna know is, is communicate, communication, you know? I taught my pharmacist about central sleep apnea. The medicine that she's been giving me since 2011, I taught her that that is what was making me sick because she didn't know. And that, that just blows me away. What are some future advancements that you'd like to see? I would like to see technology improve. It seems like it is kind of slowly with the devices and gadgets and stuff. It's very confusing. People don't know what's what right now. So I think I would like to see more communication. People are scared. People see the the. The pictures on Instagram, people are showing uh, the, all the cords and everything, the wires, and, and people see that and they're very scared. Like this, I've seen people say, what's wrong with you? And are you okay? You know, it's this scary thing. And, and, and that's, I want people to, to go there and have that study because they don't know. You do not know until you have a sleep study. And so technology would be great. I wish it was further along by now. You would think that there would be better equipment. But all I, all I know is my mask helps me. So I just wanted people to know. How did you become such an advocate for CPAP? There's a stigma with the CPAP mask because it's not sexy. It's claustrophobic. And it's another thing that we have to deal with. It's a pain. It's a lot easier to just not use the machine. I was embarrassed early on, you know, but there's a bad stigma with it. And that's, that's what I'm trying to break. And I don't know, you know, like a single woman or a single man, like, and, and if you have somebody over, you know, a partner, it's very embarrassing to some people. I talk to all kinds of people about CPAP life and CPAP, sleep apnea, and, and nobody really even understands obstructive. They just say, oh yeah, the mask. Everybody just knows about that mask, but they don't know anything about how, anything about it, you know? Sort of, but it's, it's just snoring and, and obesity. That's all people kind of really think it is. I used to be like that. You know, I lost a lot of weight. I gave my machine back. I'm fine. And that it was all bad. What pushes you to be Mr. Sleep Apnea? It's scary stuff. And people don't know. It's the lack of knowledge. But now that I wear the mask, I'm able to learn and process differently now than I ever have. I always struggled at school just like my father did and my son. Now I know why. I was always slow at work. I could work, but I was just always, I knew I was slow. And, and now I'm just, I have all this energy. Like I really don't even know who I am sometimes. I'm a completely different person. And it's only, be, it's only because of that mask. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of the CPAP mask. I love it. I walk around with it to, to promote awareness. I grew my hair out for the first time. I'm 47 years old. I never grown my hair. And so, yeah, if people ask me about my hair, I ask them if they've had a sleep study. It gives me a chance to interact with people. And then I usually am able to tell them things that they didn't know. So I'm, I'm trying to teach people, you know? And everybody seems to know, oh yeah, yeah, my dad has it, or my grandpa. Everybody knows somebody. But then when I ask them, have you had a sleep study? They usually say no. And as far as I'm concerned, you, you can't self-diagnose a sleep disorder. You need to have a sleep study. 
period. It's impossible to know. There's way too many variables. And I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't even be able to, to know what I, I've learned a lot. I don't know everything like these doctors do, but I know the basics of it and I know the importance of it. And it is affecting like older women go through menopause, uh, children with ADD. My, my son, he, he's, he's not well at all. He thinks he's fine and he's not. Um, he still wets the bed. He's almost 18 years old. And it's affected his life, our lives. And so, yeah, it's very scary. To learn more, visit sleepapnea.org now.